Welcome to Toy Poloi. Parental guidance. This video contains scenes of Lego destruction. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Poloi. And today's video is going to be about repairing vintage G.I. Joe knees. In front of me here you can see I have two G.I. Joes. I have Night Viper and Ice Viper. And both of these have suffered over the years and you can see that they've had a little bit of damage to their lower legs. So today I'm going to show you how to fix that. Now the reason I have two figures to show you is because uh, the construction of these figures actually changes. Uh, Night Viper is from 1989 and Ice Viper is from 1987. And between those years the way the lower legs were attached to the figures was changed slightly so I'm going to have to show you two different fixes one for Ice Viper and one for Night Viper so let's get on and fix these poor guys legs so here we have the two figures and as I said uh, the way these are constructed changed slightly between 1987 and 1989 so I'm going to have to show you a couple of different fixes uh, the immediate thing that you can notice is actually the hole on the lower leg is a slightly different size the 87 version has got a larger hole and then 89 version is a slightly smaller hole and that is because the way they were attached inside was modified slightly so what I've got to do now is take the rest of the legs off and I'll show you exactly what the differences are uh, the legs are also slightly different on the 87 version on the ice viper both the knees are held together in the same way on the 1989 figures they changed it and i think this is something to do with how the figures were constructed in the factory on the 87 figures you could actually put you could swap the left and right feet and it wouldn't make any difference both of the uh, sort of connections on the knee were the same so you could mistakenly put the left foot for the right foot and the right foot for the left foot on the 89 version it's changed so that uh, the left knee uses one method and the right knee uses a different method meaning that you can only put the legs around a certain way and they can never be sort of constructed wrong. I'm guessing that's why they changed this but it means as I say we have to do a few different fixes. So uh, all I'm going to do is remove the legs. Uh, you know exactly how to do this. We've just got to unscrew the screws on the thighs and then we can take all of the parts off. I will probably have to take the rest of the figures uh, apart to put them back together but initially all I'm going to do is just unscrew these screws so that we can get all the parts of the legs off and then you can see exactly what the issues are. Okay so with these legs apart we can now clearly see the differences between them because uh, this is the 87 version so both of the holes on the lower legs are exactly the same size which means if I take the unbroken leg here I can put this is the uh, left lower leg going onto the left thigh that fits neatly and if I take the right lower leg you can see that also fits very neatly onto that so if you're constructing this in a factory you could easily swap these lower legs over and have them on the wrong way round. Now on the 1989 version if I uh, find the unbroken side which is uh, his right leg you can see we have a tiny post on there which means there is a small hole on this leg and that one fits on really snugly but if we take his left leg you can see the hole on that leg is much bigger and if we put that on it's really loose and if I had an unbroken version of this the post on this side is much bigger so what would happen is if you try to put this leg on it wouldn't actually fit so uh, they are two different sort of constructions or two different designs on those legs which means that you can never put these uh, lower legs on the wrong way around and I'm guessing that is the reason that they did it just to make it harder for th the figures to be constructed wrong in the factory so what we've got to do is mend these legs because they are both missing uh, the post on one leg. We'll start with Ice Viper. So here are the leg pieces. This one is unbroken. You can see the post is in place and this one has the post missing off. So we need to replace this post or make something that will do the job and again as luck would have it Lego comes to the rescue because there are these Lego whip antennas and you can see there there's a piece that almost looks exactly like that missing piece if I bring it in if you can see it's an almost perfect match what we've got to do is chop that down and the, this again just by chance is the perfect size I have one here without the little ball on the end because uh, the ball doesn't fit through the hole in his legs but if I take the leg and I take this whip antenna and you can see that that leg really moves quite freely so what we've got to do is cut a piece of this off and we'll use that to make the missing post. We can use the unbroken one as a sort of rough guide as to how long we need to cut this piece of Lego. I need to cut it slightly longer because we will have to drill a small hole into the broken area there so that we can sort of fix that in and glue it in place just with a bit of super glue just to give it some strength. We don't need to drill in particularly far because you can see there's not a great deal of space so possibly one and a half millimeters a very small amount but enough that we can just put a piece of that in and sort of wedge it. On the other side of the leg with the area with the smaller 
part of the post. You can see there's already a little indent there and this uh, bit of Lego just happens to fit quite nicely in that. So we just need to make sure we've got uh, about the same sort of distance in on the other side. And really all we've got to do is sort of get cutting. So I have a pair of plastic nippers here. I'm going to cut off a section. I'm just going to sort of roughly, as I say, work out how long it needs to be. So we've got to make it slightly longer than that. At this stage we don't need to be particularly precise because we can always modify this. So I'm going to cut about that much off. I think that's probably a right sort of length. There you go, you can see, yeah, that's about right. So we've got a little bit that we can sort of insert into the broken area. Now we need to drill a hole into this piece. When you use Lego a lot, you learn what the sizes of uh, the pieces are. And I know from experience that uh, this little post is three millimeters in diameter. So what I've done is I have a three millimeter drill bit in my pin vise here, and I'm gonna very carefully drill a small amount of this plastic out, just enough that we can insert that Lego piece into. So uh, let me do that, we'll get that put in place. We may need to modify the Lego piece just to make it a little bit shorter. And then once uh, we're happy with how it looks on that side, we can trim off the thinner piece of the Lego and uh, get that to suit as well. But first up, let's drill that hole. Okay, so that is looking good. You can see I've uh, slightly sanded the edge of that just to make it a little bit uh, rounded. I know you, I've done, only drilled in maybe sort of one and a half to two millimeters there, but that is enough to insert that piece in. You can see already that's starting to look a lot like the original. You can actually get these uh, Lego antenna in white. I just happen to have one in black at the moment and it makes it easier to show you on camera if I've got something a slightly different color. But to, if you want to do this exactly the same as the original one, then I would suggest buying a white uh, whip antenna. Now we need to glue that in place. So I just have a bit of super glue here. I'm gonna put a very tiny amount on the end of this uh, bit of Lego, just enough to uh, stick it in place. And I'll stick that on, I'll let it dry, and then uh, we can sort of cut the other end of the Lego piece off to suit. But uh, I want to get this piece stuck in place first and make sure everything has had time to set. But you can see straight away we're starting to get something that does look an awful lot like the original uh, missing leg post there. So we'll just let that set and then we can uh, trim the end off and put the leg back together. Now that that's good and stuck in place, we can trim that Lego piece down to be about the same length as the original post there. So I'm just gonna sort of use the original one as a guide and we'll trim that off about there. We'll check that everything fits and then we can screw this uh, leg back together and that, that should work quite nicely. So we'll just check that that all fits. You can see that's a little bit long. I've uh, trimmed it just a little bit too long. It's not quite going into uh, the right place. So we'll just modify that slightly. That's why it's better to sort of not trim too much off in one go, just in case you do get it slightly wrong. You've always got that little bit of leeway to make sure that it goes back together properly. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. I think what we actually need to do is just to carefully take some of the burrs and the little bits of plastic off the edge of that. Where you cut it, sometimes the plastic tends to sort of spread out a bit. Too. Just get the file onto that. Make that fit nice and snug. Yeah, there you go, you can see that fits quite snug. So now let's try the leg again. We'll put that on, push that into place. Make sure it all goes together sort of snugly. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, and that's the leg reattached. So I'm going to put this figure back together and we can see him all standing. And there we go. We now have the Ice Viper with his leg attached and he will stand up quite nicely. So that's the first one done. Let's move on to the 1989 version of Night Viper and get his leg reattached. P-O-Y-P-O-L-L-O-I now for the Night Viper, we have to use some slightly different bits of Lego. We're gonna use this Lego Aerial because the leg that we are fixing is the left-hand leg, which actually has the larger hole on it. Now, annoyingly, Lego is just slightly too big for this. So there are two ways you could do it. The first way is actually to drill out uh, this hole to make that a three millimeter hole. As I showed you earlier, the Lego piece is all three millimeter. So it'd be very quick just to drill that out. The way I'm gonna be doing it is I've uh, actually sanded down this Lego antenna just a little bit, just using 
a little file like that uh, and I've just taken off the outer edge of it so you can see that that part of the Lego aerial is slightly thinner and that is now small enough to go through the hole and we're going to be using that to make the missing post. Again you can see the post has snapped off there so what we've got to do is actually measure how uh, thick this uh, sanded down piece is and drill an equivalent hole there. If you don't have a ruler all you need to do is actually get your pack of drill bits out. You can see here this is my pack of drill bits which has all different sizes on it and I'm guessing because I've sanded a little bit off uh, that that uh, piece of plastic is now 2.5 millimeters. So I've got a 2.5 millimeter drill bit here and I can push that through the hole. All of these things are bound to be a sort of standard size because of just because of the way these toys are made. So uh, the Lego pieces are three millimeters and it looks like this hole is about two and a half millimeters. So I'm gonna swap my drill bit for this one and do exactly the same process. I will drill a small hole into this leg. There's actually a little bit more plastic there so I can uh, drill a little bit deeper. We can insert a piece of this in, glue it in place, chop it down to the right size and then put the figure back together. So you can see I've just stuck that Lego piece in with a bit of super glue again. We can trim that down. I need to leave it slightly longer than this uh, piece in the middle because I want to make a point to uh, go into that hole as I mentioned. So I'm just going to uh, trim this down and slightly shape the end of that uh, and we should get something that again will hold in place quite nicely. But already you can feel that this is quite firmly held in place. I've just got to do a little bit of sort of fine trimming. So. The trick is to line this up uh, just enough that we can see the size. So actually I think what I'll do is I'll just trim this end off completely. Then we can put that leg on and I can work out exactly uh, where it needs to go. But already that's looking pretty good. It's quite a sort of sturdy fit there, quite stiff already. So it's gonna be quite poseable. Um, but yeah, I just wanna trim that down and leave a little bit sticking off the end. So uh, let's, let me do that and then we can put the leg back together. So I'll just trim this right down to about there. And then what I want to do is just shape that end. I could either do this with a file, but I think I will probably just be able to do it with these plastic nippers. Just sort of carefully take some of that off and make a little point so that it sticks into the hole on the other side of the leg. Actually, no, I'm going to slightly change my plan here. I was thinking I could trim that down, but probably the easiest and quickest method is just to enlarge the hole on the other side. So I've still got my two and a half millimeter drill bit here. I'm just going to drill that hole out. As this leg has already been modified and mended, I don't think it makes much difference if I modify this side as well. So let's just make that a bit larger. And then those two pieces will fit very snugly together. Yeah, I think that's the better way to do it. I should have done that in the first place, but there you go, that's gonna fit quite nicely. So let's put his leg properly together. So that goes on there, that goes on there. And there we go, we've reattached his knee. So uh, yeah, I'll put the figure back together and we can see the final results. Now you know, and knowing is half the battle. And there we go, the uh, Vipers are back and ready to fight G.I. Joe again. This seems to be quite a common problem with G.I. Joe's uh, broken knees. I've seen it quite a few times and I have quite a few in my collection that have uh, damaged knees that I have repaired like this. It doesn't take that long to do and always I recommend having a little pot of uh, Lego pieces to hand because you never know when you will need them. There are so many useful Lego pieces out there and they can be used to fix all sorts of toys, not just G.I. Joe knees. If you watch my other videos, you'll see me use Lego all the time for fixing stuff so I would recommend having a little pot of uh, useful pieces like this. It's a key tool to uh, fixing toys. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have then make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the bell to be notified each time I upload a new video and thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Toy Ploy. Subscribe for more great videos. You can also follow Toy Ploy on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram.